Hey, what's up everybody? My name is Moss. And in this video, I want to talk about how I became a DevOps engineer. So I've previously made videos on the channel about how to become a DevOps engineer. And I may have briefly discussed my experience in those videos, um, but I haven't really dedicated a video discussing just in detail uh, my experience and my path into DevOps. So I want to walk you through my journey into DevOps, and this will span a career of about, uh, let's see, six, uh, seven, six, almost nine years, I think. I think this video might be motivational for some people who are not sure if DevOps is the right fit for them or if they can even get into DevOps, um, because my uh, journey into DevOps started from a pretty non-technical background and over the course of my career progressed into more technical roles. So let me start off at the beginning with my education. My undergraduate degree was in creative writing, uh, so completely non-technical. I barely took any uh, technical courses in college, and uh, when I got into the workforce, um, out of necessity, I got a job as a IT support specialist. And at the time when I joined uh, this company as like an IT help desk person, I had absolutely zero knowledge about computers, how they worked, um, you know, their parts and components. I mean, it was, I was starting off completely fresh. And I worked in this role for about a year. And during that time, I learned the very basics of computers. I learned how to re-image computers. I learned how to reset passwords um, and some other like very basic tasks I was able to do. I also, I think during this time, I also uh, got my um, A plus uh, certification as well. So I learned about computer parts and how they worked and how they interacted with each other. And then after this, I got a job uh, in government contracting. Now this was a very non-technical role. Uh, it was uh, in the domain of configuration management, but at a very high uh, non-technical level. And what I did in this role was called change management. And basically what that means is that when a, a new software release was pending deployment to the production environment, there were various things that had to be approved by stakeholders, like they needed to make sure that testing had completed, that there had been like a security and risk assessment done on that particular release. And so as a change management uh, analyst, we would uh, take software releases to a change control board and then um, walk through each change and make sure that it was approved to be deployed to a production environment. Um, so it was a very non-technical role. It was more of like a business operations role. I was in this role for about two years. And during this time, uh, I was working outside of my job to uh, increase my technical skills and technical competencies. And w one of the things that I did was... Uh, I took uh, community college classes in basics like programming. Um, I think I did a, like a, a very basic um, database uh, class at a community college. And I took those classes because they were prerequisites to enter into a technical master's program. It was an information systems uh, uh, master's program. So after completing the community college uh, courses, I entered into uh, this master's program in information systems management. And the program was fairly non-technical. Um, it was mostly, I mean, as the name implies, it was like a management, kind of like a high-level program, um, but it did cover some technical concepts, like there was a database uh, class, there was a project management class, I think I took a security class as well. Uh, but in general, it was all of the topics were covered at a pretty high level. And I wasn't really satisfied with that. I wanted to do uh, coding and programming and learn uh, computer science concepts. So uh, I tried to transfer into uh, the computer science program from information systems management. And I was able to do that, but right after I got transferred into that program, um, I was applying for more technical jobs and I happened to get a, a job offer that was going to require me to uh, move. So rather than continuing that program, I basically dropped the program and I accepted this job offer. But in addition to accepting the job offer, I applied to a different computer science program 
one that I've talked about on this channel, the uh, Georgia Tech Online Master's in Computer Science program. And I was accepted into that program for the following year. So this new job role was not very technical. Uh, it was more technical than the change management analyst role. Uh, but basically what I was doing was system administration, um, but like very basic system administration. Uh, the company that I was working for, they had a on-premise uh, like GitHub enterprise instance. And so I was administrating uh, that um, GitHub enterprise instance. And in addition to that, uh, I was also doing like process improvement. So it was slightly more technical, but still, I would say I, I was still pretty uh, fresh with like all of the concepts related to system administration uh, and any other technical activities in DevOps. So before that job, I had never heard of version control. I'd never heard of Git. I'd never heard of GitHub. Wasn't familiar with those tools, um, but I basically ramped up on those uh, tools once I joined the company. And uh, in addition to the system administration part, uh, I helped improve um, this company's like issue management tracking uh, using Jira. So before they were using Excel spreadsheets to track like software issues and stuff like that. And so I helped design a better issue management system to triage issues and get them to the right team. And in addition to the administration of our GitHub instance, um, I also trained a bunch of software developers on how to properly use Git and GitHub. So I would train software developers in a two-day boot camp that would basically take you from zero to 100 on Git and GitHub. And being an instructor for this boot camp uh, helped me learn a lot. It helped me uh, learn a lot about how Git works, how GitHub works, uh, branching strategies in software development. It helped me learn more about the software development lifecycle in general. And it also led me into creating videos like this one on YouTube that were, you know, uh, technical educational content. I worked in that role for about three or four years, and then I moved to a different role uh, at the same company, but with a different team and uh, as a DevOps product manager. So I went from going, uh, going from like a technical role, it was doing like system administration to uh, more, you know, of a pr project management focused uh, role where I was doing backlog refinements, sprint planning, road mapping, and stuff like that for a DevOps team. And like I said, in this role, I wasn't doing a lot of technical tasks um, I, other than like what was required to uh, you know, plan various activities for the DevOps team. And then I also wrote some uh, Python scripting to visualize CI, CD, build data for Art Jenkins uh, instances. I stayed in this product management role for about a year before I got a job offer uh, to be a DevOps engineer at a different company. And this role became the most technical role that I've had in my career. Now, I got this role after graduating from Georgia Tech's um, master's in computer science program. And I do think that that program helped me get more interviews. And I think it also helped me pass interviews as well because uh, the program was heavily focused on teaching computer science concepts uh, through practical uh, coding projects. So although the job roles that I had up to that point weren't very technical, I think the master's degree helped me, helped boost my career uh, in that capacity. And what's funny is that during this time, uh, I had been making videos on YouTube, uh, you know, educational videos on YouTube. And I think that these videos also kind of contributed to uh, me getting, at least getting more interviews, maybe not uh, getting offers necessarily, but I noticed that as I interviewed, um, my you know YouTube videos would be brought up more and more often. Now it's not like I was being recognized in interviews, like oh you're the Tech with Moss channel. Uh, no, I was putting on my resume that I was creating educational content, and I think it gave interviewers kind of a preview of what uh, what it was like to talk to me, and even to get a preview of my experience. And I definitely think that the YouTube videos and the degree were contributing factors to me getting an offer from this company. Once I joined this company, I had a fairly steep learning curve because as I said, this was the most technical role that I had in my career. Up to this point, I was uh, working on technical side projects like related to my YouTube videos, for instance, I was exploring things like Golang and gRPC and stuff like that. 
Um, but professionally, I wasn't getting a lot of technical experience. So in this role, I was primarily working on Ansible, and then I was also getting a chance for the first time to do coding, and not just like a script, a Python script here and there, but actually contributing to a code base and using a formal um, software development workflow where we had merge requests and we had to have uh, reviews and the reviews had to approve the merge request before the code could be merged. And so I really enjoyed uh, that aspect of the role. And like I said, the other activities were primarily focused on uh, deploying services via Ansible and they were containerized services as well. So you can think of like uh, Grafana and Prometheus being deployed to infrastructure, but as a container and uh, via Ansible. And I was in that role for the most recent uh, like year and a half of my career. Overall, I've enjoyed the experiences that I've had at each company over my career. Personally, I wouldn't describe what I've been doing for most of my career as DevOps engineering necessarily. Uh, I think that if you were to ask someone in the industry, like, what, what do you do in, in DevOps engineering, they would describe like the, the last you know, year and a half of my experience as DevOps engineering, where you're uh, working on infrastructure, managing infrastructure, doing, you know, building CI CD pipelines and stuff like that. And more than the first half of my career was mostly non-technical roles, or they were technical, but focused more so on process improvement and training and things of that nature. I wouldn't consider them highly technical roles. But over the course of seven years, uh, those roles did end up leading to a DevOps engineer role. A DevOps engineer role that I think most people think of when they think of a DevOps engineer. So does this mean that it takes seven years to become, uh, or seven or eight years to become a DevOps engineer? No, I don't think it does. I think that you can become a DevOps engineer much earlier in your career. Um, but in general, a lot of DevOps engineering uh, positions are roles that are filled by people that have uh, quite a few years of experience in the tech industry. They might be coming from a software development background or they might be coming from an IT background. But I think in general, you'll often see DevOps engineering positions like on LinkedIn and stuff, the job requirements uh, often reference like five plus years of industry experience because in general, you should have like this high level view of how software development works um, over the entire software development life cycle. And not only do you have to have familiarity with IT operations, but you also kind of have to have some software acumen and understand how software is actually developed, like, you know, basic concepts of software development, building software, testing software, uh, so that you can be a well-rounded DevOps engineer. I haven't posted an updated video uh, on how to become a DevOps engineer in a while, but if you're interested in seeing a video like that, like a DevOps roadmap, um, and what what things you should do in order to become a DevOps engineer, uh, let me know in the comments, but I hope that you enjoyed this video and that you found it valuable. If you did, please consider throwing a like on it and subscribing to the channel for more videos like this. Thanks for watching.